Hey everyone, Karant here welcoming you back to Skies of Arcadia Legends. In the last episode, we flew around the world and found a lot of discoveries. And at the end of said discoveries, we discovered, well, this nifty little thing flying around here. I figure, you know, it's it, it would be a bad episode if I didn't see this guy flying around and think, you know what, I'll just sit here and challenge him and we'll see how it goes. So we're going to begin this episode by taking this guy on, whoever he is. I'm going with Super Looper myself. I don't know, I just like the alliteration of it. And nice little entry sequence there, wow, hi. <laughs> ah! Alright, it's the Giant Looper, okay, fair enough. Interesting that we've got a command turn at the start here, so I guess Weissel could just go ahead and shoot that off. Uh, for the rest of it though, we'll just go ahead and do normal stuff, the Appawaxes of the world and all that, so... Let's see, probably be more efficient actually, considering that money's not really a problem, to just go ahead and use two of the, ah, uh, where are they, that's gear greases, right? Yeah, there we go. Just go ahead and use a couple of gear greases. I think this actually is the first airship battle, now that I can, now that I think of it, I think it's the first airship battle, maybe in the entire game, where we've had Gilder instead of Enrique. So, interesting. Okay, 10,000, and you've got about 40,000 HP, so you're not going to be tough to take down. I might have actually wasted those gear greases now that I think about it. Oh well. Yeah, we shall see. Also, uh, interesting looking at all those other, other little rings around it. I wonder if that's going to come into play at any point, or if that's just sort of a graphical setup. Okay, Looper Ring's going to attack us. And it does a fair amount of damage. Not a whole lot, but a fair amount. Be interesting to see any other attacks this thing has up its sleeve. Okay. It's also interesting that technically speaking, it doesn't really move. We just move in relation to it. Maybe those other... Oh, yeah, there you go. I was going to say, maybe those other rings are just different areas where he can pop up. So I'm guessing that's what it is. Okay. Huh. It's an odd little mechanic there. Alright, so... He's... Wait, it ran? Seriously? Uh... Okay. Well, that didn't go so hot. That's unfortunate. I wanted to kill the thing! Well, crap. Okay. Well, I guess in that case then, we will get back to the art of discovery finding, and I'll see you guys when I find the next discovery, and if we happen to find another one of those little critters, well, I'm just gonna aim to take it down in one turn, because I think if we lay in the cannons, we should be able to. So, yeah, uh, I'll step aside, and I'll see you guys when I find the next discovery. You have found the Rabbats. What in the world is this thing? A strange creature that spends its entire life hanging upside down by digging its claws into the rock face. Until it was discovered underneath the value and continent, it was thought to be a myth. Its intelligence and ferocity belie its cute appearance. The crap is that thing doing there? I mean, how do you even survive that way? Uh, okay, so where am I first off? I am up near the Mall of Tardis, roughly, and the way that I found this place is basically just go to the Dancing Lights, which you can't really see right now, but go to the, oh, there they are. Go to the Dancing Lights, basically go north and mash A, and you've got your Rabbats. Okay, so, now that I've found that one, uh, let's head over to the next one. You have found the Bottomless Pit. Finally, took a little bit of looking around to find that one. A chimney-like rocky mountain with a hollow center rising up from the great cloud sea. From the depths of the pit, it is said that a woman's weeping can be heard in the wind. Could this be the mythical entrance to the land of the dead? Oh boy. Okay, so where is this one? This one is kind of weirdly located. It's just north. Best way I can think to describe it is go just north of this island here. And you'll eventually find it right around this area. It's kind of a toughie, really. But anyway, 
I found it, finally. And there's your tricyclone, just in case you need it, I guess. Uh, I've already found that one, though, so I'm not going to go after it. Alright, so I think next one is... I'm not sure exactly where the next one is, so let's go see if we can find it. You have found the star sand! Which, now that I know where it is, I really should have found this a long time ago. In southern Nasser, there was once a desert filled with sand that would sparkle even in the dark of the night. But slowly, their sparkle faded. But legend has it that someone saved some sand in a giant bottle and hid it for centuries. So why in the world is it spilling out now? Well, there you go. And the main reason I say I should have found it before is because look where it is! It's right by Esperanza! Which means I should have hit it when I was roaming around here toward South Ocean. I should have hit it when I was roaming around here toward Esperanza. My goodness, this is just an example of me being an idiot, pretty much. Alright, so, hey, at least we found it now, so let's see if we can go on to the next one, shall we? You have found the Kama Rock! I, I would more call it the Diamond Rock, but whatever. Legend has it that Kama Rock was once an island in South Ocean thousands of years ago. The winds ripped the island apart and slowly eroded it down over the years to the state that it's in today. Perhaps someday Kama Rock will no longer exist. Well, <laughs> it'll exist now because there are no more winds in South Ocean, so I guess you can thank us for that. Alright, I think the next discovery, from what I can tell, is pretty close by, so I'm going to go ahead and head that way. You have found the Turtala Pole! Well, that was a little bit of a tough one to finally dig out, I guess. It is a wooden pole, and with the, face, with the faces of people and various animals engraved into its length. The upper and lower portions were lost years ago, so nobody knows what its true purpose was. A monument? A grave? Or perhaps a store sign? <laughs> I don't think it was a store sign, just... I, I, I can get the feeling that that's not what it was, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Anyway... So, we finally got that one out of the way. Uh, let me show you where I am before I dart off. It's down here, kind of in the southern reaches, just to the west. I was about to say east. Of Horteca. Uh, kind of at the bottom of this island here. So, that's where you can find it. It's right next to this taller plateau. That makes it, I think, a good bit easier to try to locate. Alright, so anyway, there that is. And so, let's go see if we can find another one. You have found the Giant's Hammer! Wow, this is probably one I should have found earlier too, jeez. A strange structure found in the northern regions of Ixataka. It was named Giant's Hammer for its unusual shape. There are many local legends that tell of giants, so perhaps the name is not far from the truth? Who knows? Uh, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Uh, you might notice we're right next to Gordo's Bistro, and that's pretty much where it is. It is on that island, kind of right by the Dark Rift here. So really, you could have found this a lot earlier than I did, if you explored more and visited the right islands. I'm not sure how I didn't discover this earlier, I guess? Maybe because I wasn't really aware that... or Well, I don't know necessarily about aware, but maybe I wasn't cognizant or thinking about the fact that there were invisible discoveries, and so I just wasn't sitting here mashing A all the time. I don't know, because I likely flew over this island and just didn't get it. Okay, alright, so, well, we found it now, I guess, so let's go and see if we can find some more. You have found the Ice Lens, which incidentally is not very far from the Ice Bird. A giant lens made purely of ice, it is supposedly impervious to heat. Legend has it that people of the ancient world used the lens to burn ships out of the sky, or to see faraway lands. But then why was the focal point last centered on Glacia itself? That's a good question, actually. Okay, so like I mentioned, it's pretty close to the bird. Uh, here's the bird. Here's the lens. Basically, just go east from the bird and you'll find the lens. Effectively, it's the best way I can think to describe it. Alright, so, took us a little bit of flying around on that one because it's kind of hard to pinpoint. But yeah, we found it, so let's go on to the next one. You have found the paper airship! Boy, was this one tough to track down. Nobody knows how this peep of piece of paper survived the trials of ages. Yeah, no kidding. Perhaps it's a mystery that will never be solved. 
Some say that inscribed upon the paper is a map to a fabled land, but nobody knows the truth. Okay, this is one of those flying discoveries where it really helps to have the white map on because God help you, you're gonna have a hard time tracking it down otherwise. It's up here, and basically just flies east and west across this little rock shelf here. But of course the problem is trying to find it. You need to be pretty close to the cloud layer ultimately to be able to see it, otherwise it's just gonna fly right over your head, literally. So if you're looking for that one, just bring a little bit of a taste of patience because you're gonna kinda need it. Anyway, hey, at least we got it, tracked it down, so let's head on to the next discovery. You have found the Ryugu Island. Somehow. And so the turtle brought the old man to an island of great beauty where the beautiful Princess Oto awaited. They laughed and ate and danced for days. When the turtle finally brought the man home, the old man home rather, 300 years had passed. Oh my goodness, that was a tough one to locate. Okay, it's... Uh, apparently you're supposed to see a turtle flying this thing through the air, but I see no turtle. Uh, where am I? You can kind of tell probably where I am, but I'm close to Tenko Island, just sort of southeast of it, I guess. That's the best description I can give, honestly. <laughs> I can't really help you much with this one, if, just in case you're wondering. But hey, at least we found it. Oh, that one takes a while though. That's one of those flying discoveries that, yeah, it uh, it can it can be a little troublesome to locate. So I'm gonna go see about seeing if I can find the next one. You have found the Ryugu turtle. So apparently I got my discoveries mixed up. The first one I found was the island that the turtle was carrying. This one's the turtle itself. Boy. Once upon a time, an old man rescued a turtle who was being picked on by the neighborhood children. Thanking the old man, the turtle offered to give the old man a ride on his back. So into the sky they flew to a faraway land. And that faraway land is right here. Okay, this guy's a toughie to track down, and you can kind of see why, I think. Because he changes levels, or at least he changes altitudes. You see him flying down there, going toward lower sky? That makes this little critter tough to track down, and I admit I had to do the save reset bit. And once you do that, you fly southeast out of Tenko Island and he's right there coming at you. So this is one of those where the save reset trick actually can save you some time. Uh, as for where I am, I'm right here, pretty much right next to what I had previously just discovered. So hooray for that, I guess. All right, so I think we've just got one page of discoveries left, I believe, if I could pull up the menu right here. Silly me. We should have just about one page of discoveries left, I think. We've found a pretty good number now. I've still got to find that one right there, the Flutterflies. Uh, but now we've got, okay, we've got four more discoveries left on this page. So that's going to be, okay, we're looking at 80. So that's going to be 81, 82, 83, and 87. Okay, so I'm going to go off and I will see you guys when I find those. You have found the Stone Lovers. It is said that the tomb of a great Yafutoman king is hidden somewhere near this statue. The people of Yafutoma believe that this statue was carved after his death to show the love that his people had for him and the love that he had for his wife. Oh, that's a nice little story. And this one is easy to find, which is nice after the other two. Basically, you see I'm here pretty much right by Yafutoma itself. Just go to Lower Sky. You'll see this little spit of land right here. Uh, wherever it went. Where'd you go? Where'd you go, spit of land? Oh, jeez, okay. Anyway, it's right around here. Oh, there it is, okay. You see this little island right here? It's right on this island, so it's not really a tough find at all as far as that sort of thing goes. Okay, the next one, from if I'm reading the map correctly, the next one's gonna be a flying one under the lower sky, so I'll see you guys when I find it. Okay. I gotta be honest, I'm conceding these other four discoveries for now. I want to go ahead and show you on the discovery log. I, That is not the right way to get to the discovery log, Eric. I have not found any of the others. I tried to go back and find number 57, which I think is the Flutterflies. And then those last three on this page, I just couldn't find any of them. I went to all the different areas on the map, and I'm using a map now along with the text, to try to find them. I've flown along the routes, I've done save and resets, I've pretty much done every trick I can think of, and I can't find them. 
I mean, that's not to say I won't find them, but honestly, between the two recording sessions, I've done almost three hours of recording, and honestly, I, I need to do something else. I'm just kind of getting fatigued with staring at a computer monitor for so long. I'm getting fatigued with flying all around and looking for the discoveries. Even if for the most part it's been battle free because I've been in upper or lower sky, I'm just kind of tired, honestly. So I'm going to concede this for now. I'm going to go back, I think, and look for those other four discoveries, say, once we get through some of Soltis or just pretty much once I kind of recover by doing something else. I think I may go back and find them, but for now, I apologize. I was hoping I could get all of them in for you, but I'm just tired. And unfortunately, I'm also running out of recording time, too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over probably to Maramba or to uh, Nasrod and go ahead and sell the stuff off as far as the discoveries are concerned. And we're going to see just how much money I've made off of all these discoveries. So hang tight and I will see you guys over there. Okay, well let's see how much money we can make off of this. <laughs> to think that the King of Rhodes would ever visit this guild. King of Rogues, rather. King of Rhodes, yeah, there we go. All right, so we start out at 21,000, all right, and we start selling from there, and I get crap for the Garpa Fruits because, yeah, well, whoops. Still, yay, I found stuff. And I'm guessing all of these are ones that they had popped up hints for, so unfortunately that means I'm just not getting as much money for them, which I suppose I could understand because by this point in the game, I probably should have found a lot of these. I don't know, though. Some of them are fairly tough, so, yeah. Okay, Ghost Ship. Yep, yay. And Eclipse Point. And the Rabats. And the Bottomless Pit. And all this crap that I should have found a long time ago. Yes, sirree. Yay. Well, well, at least we're getting a decent amount of money out of this. I've got to admit, not quite as much as I would have hoped, but that's alright, though. Okay, so, well, we got about 80,000 gold off of that. That's not too bad. And that'll parlay into about 20 seeds, I guess. What I'm going to go ahead and use the money on for that is I'm going to... I'm going to use the money effectively for strength seeds. Because I've bought a bunch of magic seeds, obviously, for Fina, and I've already loaded them up onto her. So I'm going to get a bunch of strength seeds with this one and probably use most of them on Vice just to power up his attacks. But I think that is going to do it for me. So next time on Skies of Arcadia Legends, I think we're going to go ahead and head on into Soltis, I think. Uh, what I might also do is if I can look around and find some clues as to Zibble and Bane's location, I will do so. But if not, we'll head into Soltis. So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see y'all later.